Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a Neon Dynasty draft here on the channel. My name is Nikolai, and in this video, I'll be going pick by pick and play by play through a Neon Dynasty draft, talking through all of my decisions so you know what to do in your own drafts. Um, before I dive in, I want to remind you that if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more draft content, and comment below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. You can catch the Twitch stream live at twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. Okay. So, we have opened a pretty strong rare in Weaver of Harmony. It works very well with Sagas, because you can copy those triggered abilities. And, um, yeah, pretty nice. And uh, a strong rare to start it off. I think it's better than Gloom Shrieker, because Gloom Shrieker is a gold card, and so you're not guaranteed to play it, if you, uh, even if you play green. Uh, in the commons, I think the best common is probably this Okiba Reckoner Raid. This card is a pretty strong performer. I've liked it in my aggro decks. And even more mid-range decks, it's fine too. And then Moonsnare Specialist is a fine common, but I think worse than the Raid. I think I go Weaver of Harmony, Raid, Specialist, Companion, though Companion might be better than Specialist. And then maybe I'd take the gold card. Hmm. So we have Weaver of Harmony, and then we see Shigeki. So Shigeki can reveal the top four cards and put a land from on them into the battlefield tapped and the rest into the graveyard. And you can channel it to return cards. So you can play three mana to get one card. No, four mana to get one card, six mana to get two cards back, and it's a two mana one three. It's interesting. It's between that and Fade into Antiquity, I think. It also can just ramp you. I'll try it. There's also Fade into Antiquity, which would be my second pick if I wasn't taking the Shigeki. And then uh, there's Michiko's Reign of Truth, which can be good. This card's good in the right deck. But yeah, I like this pick over the Fade into Antiquity. There's a Coiling Stalker, another Snake. There is Boon of a Green Uncommon, but that's not particularly good. A common, I mean, an Uncommon and a Rare are missing out of this pack, so not huge signals. I do like Terrarium. I think it's pretty good. I also like the Moon Circuit Hacker. I think Circuit Hacker is way better than the Coiling Stalker. Just because you can draw a card, it replaces itself. I'll take the Moon Circuit Hacker. It's another enchantment creature. I think it's better than the Stalker by a decent margin. Oh, there's also Terrarium, which I like. Staying mono green is appealing, but I could still move away from green if I take this Moon Circuit Hacker, whereas I'm kind of committing myself to green if I take Coiling Stalker. And there's not a particularly good green card in this pack. Like, this is pretty cool. I just think the Hacker is really good. I want to try it. Bang of Shigeki. Works well with the hacker. Another enchantment creature. There's also Dockside Chef, which can do good stuff. Com combos particularly well with the Searchlight Companion. A bit slow and clunky, though. And then there's Ecologist Terrarium again, but I'm not going to take that here. It's between the Shigeki and the Dockside Chef, I think. Hmm, Dockside Chef is pretty good. I'm just going to get deeper into green, though. We're seeing a little bit of green. There's the Modern Age, there's Spirited Companion, there's Leech Gauntlet. I think Leech Gauntlet's the best card. Give all the creatures a little lifelink. The Blossoming Sands goes well if I end up in green-white. There's Spirited Companion. I don't think I'm supposed to take Modern Age. I think it's between the Spirited Companion and the Blossoming Sands, probably, and there's the Leech Gauntlet. We've been seeing a little bit of black, a little bit of white. This uh, Weaver goes best with 
white probably. So there's another Fang of Shigeki. Of Tamiya Safekeeping, which I do think is pretty good, but I'm still feeling things out. I'm just gonna keep, keep taking green cards, figure out my second color. Okay, this can go well in green black. The Leech Gauntlet. There's also Coiling Stalker again. Which does go well with the Fangs. I, I kind of want to take the Coiling Stalker now. Uh, the land is so appealing, but I might not play that color. And then another moon circuit. It's like, kind of like in a green-blue ninja setup. Moon, I do like Thornwood Falls. But if I'm playing blue-green ninjas, I think Moonsnare Specialist is going to be a key card. Just in case. Late synthesizer. I'm just hedging in case I open up a crazy red rare. Do I regret the Leech Gauntlet pick? Slightly. But I don't really think it's a huge deal. Is it, there is a black green drafter probably because the, the black green gold card didn't wheel. It's pack two. I have time to get white into the mix. Real tough, but... Oh, it's just so powerful that it's worth taking here. You just win so many games you play it. Like, sure, I could take Master's Rebuke and go for, like, the Synergy deck, but I'm just going to win, like, every game I cast the Owl. And also, White was somewhat open, like, slightly. Imperial Oath has been performing pretty well. I had it once, but I like taking cheap cards first, hitting a 2-drop. I do already have three 2-drops and those. I could take Befriending the Moths to go with the Weaver... There's also a Tanuki. I like Tanuki. I have early defenses, and then I can just use Tanuki to go over the top. I think it's going to be better than the trainee for that purpose. Wow, cool. Twin Shot Sniper coming around. Nice. There's a Fade into Antiquity and a Send Blade Samurai. I'm going to take the Fade. I do like the Samurai, but I think I need the Fade so I can have interaction because I don't have any yet. So I was kind of gearing up for a pretty cool blue-green deck. So here there's Intercessor's Arrest, which is really good. There's also Tales of Master Sashiro, which works well with the Weaver of Harmony. But I think I'm mostly just going to focus on getting removal spells, because white-green can struggle in that department. Tales of Master Sashiro is good with this guy, but this guy also just like buffing up my enchantment creatures is nice. Um, and so I'll just hopefully get something like that later, but I need to prioritize removal. The difference between a deck with removal and without is huge. Okay. There's a web spinner's cuff. Nice option as a defensive card that can be an equipment. Also the trainee. I do have a few two drops already. I think cuff is nice. Just give me a way to deal with flyers. Uh, 
I like the oath or the trainee. Thing is, is I feel like I'm more of a mid-range to controlling deck even. And I don't really need early drops because I already have five. So it's like they're not a huge priority for me. Even though the trainee is quite good. So I kind of just want to take a nice top end card. Could be wrong. I, I just don't see myself playing as an aggressive strategy really. And so you don't need to add as many two drops if you're not super aggro. So I could take Searchlight Companion. Kind of get some tokens so when I do cast Ow, I have tons of creatures. There's also Scoured Barons if I wanted to splash black for something. And there's a Moth Rider Patrol, but I already have two one drops, so I don't need any more. I think I'm going to be fine with the Searchlight Companion. Grove Archer. Big defensive option. I'm more of a mid rangey deck, so I don't know if I want a pure defense option like this, but it also helps with flyers. Trine Steward can do some good stuff, but I'm just going to take the Grove Archer. We wield Imperial Oath. So befriending the Moths can give my guys flying. I just think this will be fine playing three Imperial Oaths and a Tanuki can ramp me. I don't know. It seems pretty solid. I don't like this card very much in any deck that's not aggressive. So this can be used to make two more tokens and instant speed to wreck people, potentially. I like the Tamiya Safekeeping. I'm glad I prioritized the Intercessor's Arrest and the Fade into Antiquity, because I don't have any interaction right now, really. Ways to leverage these tokens would be good. Okay, so I can give the tokens flying, which is nice. There's a fixing card, there's commune with spirits. This can't find... yeah, okay, so I'm kind of a white-green deck now. Um... If I'd taken those Spirited Companions, that would have worked out better for me, but I had no way of knowing. I don't think Scry 3 is equivalent to Draw 3. Maybe it's Scry 3 is equivalent to Draw 1, which is pretty nice, but yeah. I'm going to take the Cloud Steel Kirin. There's a 3 2 flyer for 3 that also can attack me well. Ooh. No 3, create a 1 1, put a counter on a creature, and then exile it. And I can put a creature counters on it. Seems pretty solid. It's between that and this Sunblade Samurai, I think. I don't really need the Tawashi Guide Bot. And milling stuff can work with Shigeki. I could also try playing the Arrow of Enlightenment at some point. Samurai could be fine. Take the companion. Boom, I love me a Boseju. Boseju's great. I already have one Fade into Antiquity. Two would be playable, but I'm not going to take that. I'm just going to take the Boseju because it's insane. And then Safekeeping is maybe going to wheel. Probably not, though. Preserver, Tales of Masters this year. Tales does work with. My te my Weaver. I think Preserver is just better though. It's also Circuit Mender. I just rather rather have a cheaper card. I already have a lot of top end six drops and stuff. Check my enchantment count. I have twelve enchantments. The trash bot could actually be okay. Cultivation's a fine ramp card, but I don't think I need it. Just take Trash Bot.
I don't think I want multiples of those. Maybe four Imperial Oaths is too much. But I feel like that can just be a late game plan, is just play a bunch of Imperial Oaths. I don't know. And those will stall me till I find my owl. Very light on removal. Kind of want to try this card. I haven't played it yet. My lack of removal is troubling. Maybe I have to play Lucky Offering. Cut Coiling Stalker. Two Tamiyo Safekeeping may be excessive. This goes well with the O's because then the tokens can attack his 3 3s. Ooh, I need that interaction. Let's go. I think I can cut. Born to drive. I have no vehicles and making two one ones for three. And some speed is not strong enough. Thanks, Petrovic. The tournament itself starts in half an hour, so I'm just getting a deck so that I can play between rounds. Okay, I kind of want to try Lucky Offering just because I think I need the, to have interaction. I kind of want to try the Era of Enlightenment. This is also kind of interaction. Born to Drive. Got the Companion. As Trash Bot looking 13. Enchantments and 4 Artifacts looking kind of great. Um, I have a lot of 2 drops. I think the exemplar is nice with these oath tokens. I want to try that card. I think that card's just good. Could cut the Grove Archer. Could cut Teachings, but I want to try that out as well. And the mill works with the Trash Bot. I guess I can just cut one of these. Also got Tamiya safekeeping because I don't really have cards that I care about protecting. They're all kind of disposable. And like if this thing dies, it's good for me. So yeah, let's run it like this. I'll see you in the matches. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support my content at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, and a special shout out to those at the credits level. If you've never heard of Patreon, it is a site where you, the viewer, can go and pledge an amount of your choosing each month to my content to help me continue to make videos and also gain access to some Patreon exclusive rewards like access to my Neon Dynasty card by card tier list. If Patreon is something that sounds like it would interest you, it's also worth noting that there's no long-term commitment, so you don't have to lock in and you can check it out, cancel at any time, or rejoin the Patreon if you decide to do so. You can find more information at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, links in the description down below. But without further ado, let's get to the matches. Welcome to round one. We have a keepable hand here. Lead with Weaver of Harmony, then play the teachings and uh, trigger it twice. Ooh. 
This is a swamp, even though it looks like a mountain because of the bright red spot. I'm fueling my uh, trash bot. Moon Snare Specialist, perhaps? Hi, oh, Yamanachi. I, uh, this draft went well. The tournament draft hasn't happened yet. I'm going to use my Greater Tanuki to ramp. Certainly blocking their ninja. And I already have three creatures in play for if they do kill my owl. Don't worry, YouTube comments. I read them. People are telling me it's pronounced Dao. I guess it's pronounced Dao. I'm just going to do my best, Yamanachi. I'm playing against a bunch of really good players, and uh, it's going to be a ton of fun. It's kind of like, this is how I imagine like the quality of competition is in a Pro Tour draft or something. Like, Yeah, a lot of great players. Got the win. We have time for one more round, I think, before we have to get ready for the draft event. Maybe even two rounds if it's quick, because it's uh, 20 minutes away. Okay, on the draw, I'm going to keep this hand. I've got an early defensive creature. I have stuff to do if I hit forests. I think, um, like, green, black, and green, white are pretty good. Those are the ones I've played the most. I've played Abzan a couple times. I've played green, white, and green, black separately a couple times. I, I have had an artifacts deck that played out pretty well, but I haven't gone into those directions as much. Okay, Oni Cold Anvil, pretty solid. 
I'm probably gonna intercept and arrest it. Unfortunate, but you know. It was a sketchy hand. It was one of those hands where you're like, well, winning this game's gonna be difficult, but it's doable as well. So since I'm on the defensive, I am going to just trade off my cards, try to survive. It's important if I wanted to block both creatures to go block, block, because if this thing dies, this thing will become a 1-1 one, one again. I'm going to block like that because I want to be able to hold off the 1-1s, one, and it's... I don't know what other creatures they're going to have. Okay. Sure. They're a little landlight, maybe. Nice. Okay. Certainly blocking. Can't afford to take that damage. Getting rid of this will gives me the ability to stabilize. They only have four power in play. If I draw like a planes this next turn, I have a shot. A forest, I kind of have a shot, but not really. Or maybe I kind of have. I, have, I just need to draw a land this next turn. There. Good call with the ecologist's terrain. That's good synergy. Oh, they're just hitting me hard. Okay. Yeah, not quite enough. I'd have to chump that and then have no way of winning. Well, it was a quick round, so we can play another one for the tournament. And then we'll just be playing this one between rounds. Okay. We'll get to see how good Shigeki plays out. Okay, this could go badly.
this uh, challenge. Ah, oh, it cannot block. I'm just going to do that so they can't attack, really. Unless they have a kill spell, which they easily could have. Certainly in trouble. I'm going to tap this. So they're holding up. Something. I'm in a little bit of trouble because of that enchantment. It's just slowly kicking me down. But maybe I can get there. Oh, that's tough. So I'm on a three turn clock. Can't afford to play that. I need to find my fate into antiquity for this clawing torment. Gonna activate it. Because then maybe I'll mill the card I need.
tough. Very tough. Oh, that was unfortunate. Oh, I should have... No, I didn't. It was, it was summoning sick. Yeah, I didn't have the tools to do it. I don't think it's that swingy, Zeladonio. Oh, man. A little bit of a tough loss there. I still got time for another round. Those rounds take like six minutes. That clawing torment certainly performed. We'll keep this. Or whatever that card is called, the black enchantment. It did like set eight damage to me or something. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Oh no, not all the Imperialos at once. No! This could be a fast exit. Swing low, sweet samurai. Wow, they have some big creatures. I'm in fine shape. If I draw a land, it just sets me up to start dropping these oaths. If I don't draw a land, then I, uh... Probably drawing a spell I can cast. I wonder if I can just live long enough with my Cloud Seal Karen, or if they have removal in their deck somewhere. I guess we'll find out very soon. So I have incisors of the rest for the Junji. I'm just gonna take all the damage and hope they have no kill spells. Yes, I don't have any kill spells.
they can sacrifice this. This is kind of a stressful experience. They can sacrifice it to put a flyer into play. If there gets to be a flyer in the graveyard. This is insane. I have four oaths. Yeah, that's fair. I feel like I got a little unlucky in my matchup. I got mana screwed one game. I lost to their massive dragon because it just hit me for a billion. And then I lost. Um... Yeah, I I think I got, I got mana screwed that one game. I lost to that dragon. And then I lost the round before this to uh, the ninja deck. Which was pretty close. I don't think the deck was bad. I think that's just how it goes sometimes. I will say that I, if I'd had the one mana destroy an enchantment that cost three or less artifact, I mean an artifact. Or I guess I guess it only kills artifacts. It's not artifact or enchantment. Yeah, I think this card's not really that great. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way to the end, in the comment section down below, leave hashtag that's how it goes to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. Um, we did win the one game we cast Al. Um, remember to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more draft content, comment with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. You can support my content on Patreon, linked in the description, and there's a link to a bunch of other cool stuff as well. Not every draft has to be a success. You can still learn a lot, have fun along the way, and uh, we did do some cool stuff in some of those games. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time.